Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my podcast and my signature program, I teach women just like yourself how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you like the podcast, you're going to love my group coaching program. If you want to learn more about it, including the investment, what's included, get client testimonials, and to sign up and enroll, please head over to irresistibleicing.com slash course. That link is also in the show notes. All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. And let me just say, it's about damn time. Okay, we're going to talk about it today. We are going to talk about the importance of the necessity for having a you day what is a you day what is an irresistible you day why you need this it's not to me it's not something that's nice to have it's something that you have to have and so let's just talk about the reasons why why it's important and then how to create it and i'm going to share with you what i just did on my irresistible you day okay so let's get into it all right guys so a you day is exactly what it probably sounds like it is a day for you to just make it all about yourself to go do something that you want to do without anybody else tagging along I don't want any friends I don't want any family I don't want any co-workers we don't want anybody invited to this party and this is not to be rude this is not to be you know whatever this is because we all need days where we need to check out and just be with ourselves by ourselves i find that it is so important to date yourself you have to take yourself out on dates and you know treat yourself because that is also how this is not like some frivolous thing this is not you know it's not about that. It is about getting to know yourself. It is about recharging your batteries. It is about just taking a break from all the tons of responsibilities and obligations and things that you have to deal with in your life. It's so necessary. So necessary. Okay. So the other day, I mean... I haven't scheduled, and I'm guilty, okay, I haven't scheduled myself one of these U days in a very long time, and your girl was overdue, I'm stretched to capacity, I am at my limit, and I texted my husband, I was like, I need a break, <laughs> I need a break, and this was like in the afternoon, once I was done working, he's already off to work, I've got both kids, and I'm just like, I need a break, and he ended up calling me later on, and he's like, look, this was on a uh, Friday. I want to say this was on a fr yeah, this was like Friday when I sent that. And he's like, "Look. Tomorrow, get out." <laughs> In the best way possible, he says, he's like, "Get out. I don't want to see you here till Sunday." Okay, I'm not arguing with that. Okay, I'm out. So, I'm going to get into it in a little bit like what I did during my time, but just going back a little bit to you know, we know what a U day is. We know, you know, we know what that means. It's a day for yourself. This is not a day. Let me just be clear. This is not a day where you go do errands. This is not a day where you go take care of business. Okay. This is a day that you do stuff for you and not doing stuff for you, such as running errands all day. We don't No, 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 no. Why is it so important to do this? It's important because we need to recharge our battery if we don't plan time, then we're going to burn out. We are going to burn out and then we're not good to anybody. And I know for me, if I don't have a break at some point from, you know, my business life, my kids, all of the things that I have to do in my life that I'm responsible for, I'm not going to be good for any of them, for, for anyone. I'm not going to be good for the podcast. I'm not going to be good for my children. I'm not going to be good for my work. None of those things. So, you know, taking a you day, I'm not talking about going, you know, to get your hair done and come home. 
No, no, no. We're talking about an all-day event. Sunrise, sun up to sundown, maybe even overnight, okay? This is not something that you can do all the time, obviously, because it is a time commitment, so that it does take a little bit of planning. I will say for me, this was something I had been thinking about for a few months, and we've just been so busy every weekend and have had things going on. And then I was just like, I'm done. I need a break. So luckily, I was able to do this at the last minute, so to speak. But you need a U-Day to unwind, to recharge. Okay, that's number one. You also need a U-Day to remember who the F you are. Like, when you play a part in your life of all these different roles, you know, and everybody listening to this has different roles they play. But for me, you know, I'm, I'm only talking from my experience because that's the only experience I can, you know, speak on. And from my experience, you know, playing the role of a business owner, a wife, a mom, there's like, and, and then we have subtasks under each of these things, right? And then under mom, one of my subtasks is I play the role of a, a real life pancreas every single day, all day, 24 hours a day. It's exhausting. You know, it, it, it gets to be exhausting when you're managing and juggling so many different things. And you start sometimes to forget who the F you are, who you were before all of this. You know, especially as a mom, it's like you have to remember the woman that you are. You can't deny yourself being that woman and just being a mom, right? Because if it wasn't for you being a woman and like all the things that make you, you, you would never have become a mom in the first place. So it's like, we need to remember that spark, that sparkle, that shine of like who we really are outside of these other roles that we play for other people. You know, I love being a mom to my kids, to Javi and Kat, like, and Chewy, like, they are, they are everything. I think that's very clear from, you know, you guys rocking with me for a couple years now, like, you know that. But it, we still need a break. And if you're a parent listening to this, you need to understand there is no shame and there is no guilt in taking time off for you. Okay. And so, I told Kat, I said, hey, you know, tomorrow you're going to have a daddy day. You guys are going to go, you, daddy, and Javi and Chewy are going to all hang out together, and I'm going to go have a mommy day. And I said, hold, and I corrected myself in front of her. I said, wait a second. No, that's not right. I said, tomorrow, mommy is going to have an Amy day because that's what it actually is. You know, we have mommy day all day, every day, okay? No, this is Amy day. This is the day where I can disconnect, dot, 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 to an extent. I will get to that. <laughs> um, this is about Amy today. This is about who I am, what I like to do, how I like to recharge, to remember who the F I am. Because we can't lose ourselves in these other roles. So that's the other important reason is to recharge our battery and remember who the F we are. And another reason you need a U day is that when you take this time to be with yourself, to date yourself, think of this as going on a date with yourself because essentially that is what it is. And I'm always preaching how you guys need to date yourself. You cannot know yourself if you don't date yourself. It's just like in a relationship, if you don't date someone and get to know them, how are you ever going to know them, right? So the other thing too, I find when we're caught in these, you know, this, these vicious cycles, the yo-yo diet, you know, body hate shame cycle and, you know, the up and down with the weight and staying busy and taking care of other people as a way to distract ourselves from the truth, we don't know ourselves anymore. And I... You know, in all the conversations I have with women, and I will say to them, you know, in our conversation, whether it's in a coaching call or a clarity call or, you know, what have you, and I say, if I could wave a magic wand today, what would your dream day, what would your day look like? And that is the question where everybody goes silent. 
there is always this silence on the phone, on the call, and they don't know how to answer it because they've been so busy, whether it's with other people, whether it's busy focusing on dieting, whether it's busy, you know, busy as a badge of honor, so you know, doing all that kind of crap that they don't know how to answer the question. So we need to date ourselves in order to learn who we are. You know, spending time alone and not having all of that noise, all of the overstimulation that's going on with work and kids and life and spouses and all that stuff, family. Like, you need to get all that noise out of the way so that you can hear yourself and hear your thoughts. So we have to date ourselves to know ourselves. And when you get with yourself alone and the noise goes away, you can start to hear the inner voice. And that right there is exactly why so many of you avoid spending time alone. You know, I there's this one girl I follow on Instagram. I'm not going to I'm not putting names out there, but someone that I follow, she has a pretty big following and she can't do anything by herself. I mean, this girl does not take her kids anywhere alone with her just herself. Somebody always has to be there. She's always got to have somebody tagging along to go to Target, to go here, to go there, because I feel like there's this fear of being alone because you don't want to hear the inner voice. You don't want to hear the inner dialogue that you're having because you don't love who you really are. Okay, so got to date ourselves. We just have to do it. And having this, you know, having an irresistible you day is a day that's all about you. For you to be able to do that, to learn who, remember who you are and also learn who you are trying to become. So it's about remembering who you used to be, the pieces of you that you want to keep. And then also looking and saying, this is who I really want to become. And taking those pieces and blending them together in order to become the irresistible you version of yourself. All right. So how do you create an irresistible you day? Well, that's going to be very personal, I feel like, because all of us have different, you know, um, likes. All of us have different things that we want to do. But the number one thing I would say, and I said at the very beginning of the episode, How you create an irresistible you day, number one, is it's you with yourself. We're not having anybody else. This is not a girlfriend day. This is not a mom day with your mom or your friends or your cousins or your sisters or your aunts. This is about you. I don't want you bringing anyone else along on this day. Nobody. Because if we if we have if we make it a girlfriend trip, that's a whole nother this that's a whole nother type of thing. And if we make it a girlfriend day, well then we're not able to sit in silence and listen to ourselves and hear our thoughts and all of those things. And when you're able to quiet that noise of life, you wouldn't believe the inspiration, the motivation, the creativity that is born out of that silence. It's like the margins of your life are now open again. You know, I think about a piece of notebook paper, right? And on that paper, we've got all, like I'm looking at my notebook right now. I'm looking at all my to-do lists for the day, okay? Because every day, even though I keep everything digital on my tasks, I also always, I've done this for years, for like 20 years I've been doing this, where I write down every single day what I need to get done today because I like to see myself highlight, cross it off, okay? And then sometimes we're writing in the margins notes and things that we forgot to put. Think about your life that way. When you're doing all that and you're doing the most, you don't even have margin space in your life to think, to hear yourself, to get real with yourself. You, It's just, it's so necessary. So how you create that day is number one, don't invite anybody along. And if your first reaction is like, oh, oh, God, I don't want to be by myself. Like, that's scary to me. That's even more reason for you to go do this. If you're afraid to go out alone and hang out just with yourself, then that's what you need to explore first. And I would start having a conversation and journaling with myself. Why am I so afraid to be alone? 
why am I so afraid to go out and do things without somebody tagging along? Okay. So that's rule number one. Rule number one is like, we just, we're not inviting anybody to this party. This is for party of one. Okay. Rule number two is that, again, I said this before, this is not a day for you to go run errands. This is not a day for you to catch up on phone calls. This is not a day for you to respond to emails. Because I don't want your brain having to spend the energy doing things that you do on a daily basis. That's not what this day is about. If that's what you need, then girl, that's called a catch-up day. That's called an errand day. That's called an um, administrative day. We're not doing an administrative day on our you day. That's not what this is about. So we're not working on work. We're not working on you know, anything like that. So that's the second thing. That's how you create this irresistible you day. You go by yourself and we're not doing any type of errands or responsibility type things. Okay. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to, the people that are constantly in touch with you, let's, so let's say your kids, your spouse, you know, it, when it, you're doing this on a day off, whatever, you need to communicate to those people that would be texting and calling you to leave you the hell alone in the nicest way possible. Listen, I'm going to take a me day, a you day today, a a me day. You could say your name. Like I'm going to take an Amy day today. And, you know, it's really important for me to recharge my batteries, to step away from things for a little bit. I would really appreciate if you do not, you know, text me or call me for things that can wait. Obviously, if there is a dire emergency, that's different. But people should not be texting you, hey, where's the cookies in the pantry? I can't find them. Hey, do we have any toilet paper? Oh, um, did you order the, you know, the such and such on Amazon this week? Those type of conversations should not be happening. So you need to, and, and this is where you have to set the boundary because that's your responsibility. It's not anyone else's responsibility. It's yours. You know, this is where you set that boundary of like letting them know this is what I'm doing. This is when I'll be back. And during the time that I'm gone, please do not contact me for these reasons. Okay. If you have children, then you need to be very clear with your spouse or partner or their parent. Like, listen, this is all on you today. You can handle this. You're a parent as well. You can handle it. You know, in my instance, in my circumstance, it, you know, I said I needed the break, but it was my husband being like, get out. (laughs) He's like, just get up, leave the house. I don't want to see you till Sunday. And he did not message me. I'm going to get into, I messaged him for some things. And I'm going to tell you about that when I get into like the schedule of what I did that day. But please set clear boundaries. Okay. Boundaries are not intended to hurt other people's feelings. They are to protect your energy. And so many people have it wrong. They think, well, if I said boundaries, I'm going to hurt people's feelings. I don't care if it hurts their feelings. It's not about them, boo. It's about you. It's about protecting your energy. And you can set boundaries in a way that's firm Without sounding, you know, some type of way. We can do that. And if we want to talk more about boundaries, hit me up, message me. We could do some episodes around that, okay? So we are not bringing anybody along. We're not out here running errands, doing an administrative day. And number three, we're setting clear boundaries about what's appropriate, when is it appropriate to contact me today. Now listen, we're not sending this out as a blanket message to like our friends and people that we talk to once in a while. Uh Uh-uh, okay? This is for the people in your immediate circle that would need you or contact you like your kids or your spouse, okay? Anybody else, they don't need to know. And what I suggest is, you know, if your friends message you, just, you know, hey girl or this and that or whatever, like, I would not reply. I would leave it unread and I would get to those messages the next day because Again, we don't need to feel distracted and pulled away from what we're trying to do for ourselves. If you want to answer those, be my guest. But my suggestion is if it's not urgent, it can wait. 
You can do this on your day off if you're off on the weekends. You know, I'm a big lover of going out on weekdays, y'all. Like, I am so spoiled about that that I can't even stand the weekend sometimes because everything is so crowded. So if you can get away with it, whether you have a weekday off or whether you can take a, you know, a PTO day, take that day off in the middle of the week so that whatever you go and do, you're not fighting all of these crowds of people everywhere. It is just a different experience. It really is. All right. And so then that leads us to planning your me day. So we're not inviting anyone. We're not running errands. We're setting clear boundaries about our availability. We're going to go on a day of the week that we either have off or we request off. If you can do a weekday, cool. If not, it's no big deal. Lastly, you want to have some kind of a plan of what you're going to go and do. Because what I don't want for you is to not have a clue what you want to do and then you waste the time. Now, here's, here's, here's a difference. You could say, I don't want to have any plans. And I've done this before, and this is amazing. I just want to get in my car, and I'm going to fill my tank, and I'm going to drive, and I don't know where the hell I'm going. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but I just need to get in the car and drive, listen to music, listen to podcasts, you know, get my favorite, you know, coffee or drink or whatever, and just go. That is an amazing you day. Like that is a totally irresistible U day and I have done that and it is just so like, this is also like cleansing for your soul. What we're talking about right here falls into one of the irresistible U framework guiding principles of this is how you feed your soul. You feed your soul by taking care of yourself, by dating yourself and having an irresistible U day, okay? So have some kind of idea it, it can't, it doesn't need to be like this to the minute, like that, that for me is going to stress me out. I'm not planning anything to the minute, by the minute. We're not doing that on this kind of day for me. If that works for you, you got to do what works for you because this is a very personal thing. All right. So again, what you do on your ears is you day is personal. You get to decide what that looks like. And, you know, I'm going to share with you what I did you can take take from that what you want and leave the rest. If there's pieces of that that you think, oh, yeah, like that would really work for me. That's what I want to go do. Cool. Like do that. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what I did and what my day looked like, let's, let's dive into it. So I did this on Saturday because my um, husband and I are both off on Saturday. So he can completely, you know, just take the kids, take over, and I can just go. So first and foremost, I let myself sleep in <laughs> till about, and when I say sleep in, y'all, <laughs> I think it was like 8.30. <laughs> That's sleeping in for me these days, okay? But normally on the weekends, normally on the weekends, I do like the, if Javi wakes up in the middle of the night or he wakes up super early in the morning, I'm on that shift. And I did not go in there. So so Frank handled it on, you know, when Javi woke up really, really early in the morning. So I get up and I'm not making anybody breakfast. I'm almost like invisible, right? I'm not being, mo I'm here obviously and I'm, you know, hug and kiss my kids and speak to them, but I'm not here to do breakfast. I'm not here to, you know, do 500,000 things because I'm trying to get out the door. And Frank told me later, he was like, um, he's like, so, uh, I actually thought you would be gone by the time we all woke up. <laughs> So I guess he wanted me out because cause he's like, he knew when the kids see me, then they're all about mommy, 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 mommy. And it causes a lot of stress when I'm trying to get out the door. So he's like, I really thought you would have just left early. And I'm like, no, because part of my you day is I wanted to sleep in, you know. So anyway, I get ready. And first thing I planned on doing is I was like, I had to, I'm going to get my nails done because they look a hot ass mess like I don't usually wait this long it wasn't so much my hands it was my feet my feet were atrocious because I had I, the last time I wanted to get my nails done I didn't have time to do my feet because I had to rush back home to take over mom duty and then I tried to go the day before to get a pedicure and they were so busy 
that I sat in the chair soaking my feet for a little bit and I was like, I got to go because I got to get back home. And I was so irritated. That right there was like the straw that broke the camel's back because it wasn't just about the pedicure. It was about the fact that I'm overloaded and I can't get time to myself to go do the thing that's going to make me feel relaxed. Like it's just, it, it would piss me off. And that was kind of like the final straw. And I was like, duh, 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 on the text, I'm like, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. So that was the first thing I went and did. Got my nails done. And it, because my birthday is coming up um, next weekend on the 30th, I was like, you know, because last time I didn't do all my diamonds and stuff or my crystals. And I always do those because I was just like, eh, I don't have time. And I was like, no, we're going full-blown crystals, do it up, do it big, okay, and then I got my feet done. So I was there a while, and before I went to the nail shop, I went to Starbucks, and I'm not like one of those people that drinks coffee. I don't go to Starbucks on the regular, but I do go, you know, every so often, and I got my, you know, my caramel macchiato with my nonfat milk and some egg bites. I love those, girl, those are good. I love those, and they're, they're, mm, they're good. So I did that, and I brought my, I brought my macchiato to um, the nail shop. And so I was there quite a while, and then when I left there, I was like, okay, it's lunchtime. I'm really hungry, and first of all, I need to go get gas. And let me tell you, you know, going to get a tank of gas, that's a gift that you can give yourself. <laughs> that, that nowadays, that is considered a gift to yourself. So I went and I filled up my tank and then I was like, I'm going to go to my favorite sushi restaurant and my favorite sushi, blah, 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 my favorite sushi restaurant is right next door to this foot massage place where they do like foot reflexology. And I was like, okay, wait a second. Cause what I had planned on doing is I was like, I'm going to go eat and then I'm going to drive up to, so I'm in Virginia beach for those of you that know the area. I'm going to drive from Virginia Beach up to Williamsburg. I'm going to hit up the outlets, go shopping, and then I'm going to go. I didn't, I didn't realize that we have a casino. It's technically not considered a casino minutia, guys. It's legal minutia. Um, they're slot machines. It's a damn casino, okay? I didn't realize that we actually had – I mean, I knew, but I didn't know. And I was like, I'm going to go do that because I was also thinking – that I was going to drive like three hours up the Eastern shore to go to either Maryland or Delaware. Cause there's these casino, there's a couple of casinos up there that I've been to a gazillion times. I was going to do that. I was going to drive like three hours and just stay the night somewhere <laughs> like seriously. And I was like, okay, well I could just do that. That would be really cool. It's, I don't have to drive as far and I could get more, I could do more things if I do it that way. So then I was like, but the reflexology is just so feels so good and it's so relaxing and my feet are just screaming like they need it. But that takes a long time because the one that I usually book, it's a 90 minute, it's a 90 minute massage. And I was like, you know what? Why not? I don't have to rush home. I don't have anybody that needs me right now. I don't have to be anywhere. So what difference does it make? So I was like, that's what I'm going to go do. And I went on, because they always have a Groupon, and you save like 60%. And so I went on Groupon, I booked it, and the only thing was I wanted to do it within the, the next hour, and they didn't have that, so I had to wait an additional hour. That was fine. It all worked out. So I went and had lunch at my um, at my sushi place, Volcano. It was my favorite. If you're in Virginia Beach, Volcano is my absolute favorite sushi spot. And I'm very picky about my sushi. Had lunch. Yes, I go to lunch by myself. And I loved every effing minute of it. I didn't have to worry about dragging in a suitcase full of shit of snacks and sippy cups and insulin. and blah, blah. I didn't have to bring nobody's shit with me. You know what I walked in with? I walked in with my phone. I have a little chain uh, like a crossbody chain that goes on my phone case. And then inside my phone case, um, it's like this little cover. And it has space for money and cards and whatnot. That's all I use. I walked in with that and my keychain bracelet. And I was like, this in and of itself feels like a, a vacation right now. <laughs> like, I just don't have to bring all the stuff. 
and I can sit in this booth and I can like read on my phone and eat my food and the lady because I do go there a lot she was like oh where's your little girl today and I'm like "Mm -mm, she's with her dad (laughs) so I did that and that's literally right next door to the foot reflexology so I enjoyed my lunch it was so delicious and then by the time I finished I had like a good hour and 15 minutes and I'm like I don't really want to go just sit in my car and just, you know, I don't want to do that. So I thought about, all right, I can go down the street. A a few minutes up the street, there's like a shopping area. And I'm like, I'm going to just go to TJ Maxx. I love me some TJ Maxx, okay? So I was like, let me go do that so I can, you know, kill time in between. And because I wanted to go shopping anyway. So I went and did that. And I told myself, You will not look at anything. (laughs) You will not look at anything in the kid section, in the dog section, or the home section. You are only allowed to stay in the purses, the makeup, the accessories, the clothes, the shoes, whatever. You know, that's it. Because this is about you. Because we go to TJ Maxx, I take the kids all the time. And do I look at jewelry and purses and all that stuff? Yes. Do I ever have time with them to truly like just zone out and like focus? Uh, Absolutely not. You know, because as soon as you want to do something for you, all of a sudden, I'm hungry. I got to go potty. I'm bored. It's so funny how that works, right? But if we're in the toy section, everybody is just so good. They, like they have no problems all of a sudden they just nobody's hungry nobody's feet hurt nobody's got to go pee so I just took my time and I didn't go in there with the need for anything I ended and I'm going to share this on Instagram I'm I'm putting a reel I'm you guys should be proud I'm like really forcing myself to do reels and I have fought doing reels for so long. I'm like, I am not doing that shit. I'm not getting on that bandwagon. And then what do I look at all day long on Instagram reels? I hardly look at the, I don't even know that last time I actually scroll, you know, the, the static feed. I don't ever look at that anymore. I look at stories and reels and I'm like, um, okay, so maybe we should be doing that. We should be building reels. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to make the, I actually was doing it throughout the day. Um, as I went, which I was very proud of myself. So I'm going to finish that and get it posted for you guys and I'll share. But I was just like glancing around and I saw these earrings that were so beautiful. If you saw my story that day, then you saw them. And I was like, where am I going to wear these two? I don't really know yet. I don't need them, but I want them. And I was like, put them in the cart. And then there was these other ones with the eye and they were green. And I'm like, I don't need these, but I want them and put them in the cart. And <laughs> I was like, what is going on with me? And then I wandered around the makeup section and I was shocked. I've never seen this at TJ Maxx before, but they had so much Mac makeup and it was actually some of the stuff that I wear and I was like oh my god and it was like over 50% off what it would cost at like Macy's or the Mac store so I was like put this in my cart cool and then they have their little like um what do you call it like a jewelry case like they're fine jewelry but it's I mean none of it's really like all that expensive And I saw this ring, and it was so beautiful. It was a hummingbird. And I love hummingbirds. My grandmother, like, loved, was, like, obsessed with hummingbirds. And I just, ever since then, it just, something that reminds me of her. And I really love what they symbolize. And I just think they're so cute. And so there's this ring, and it's, like, a hummingbird with a yellow stone that, you know, it symbolizes a flower. I'm like, I want that. What? Like, I'm just going to get it. Like, I'm just going to get it. Let me see if it's even in my size. Oh, my God, it was. And I'm like, I want that. And then I see another ring, and it's like a big heart, right, with like, I mean, obviously, these are not diamonds. These are like crystals or whatever, but it's beautiful. And I'm like, I wonder if that's in my size. And it was. And I'm like, okay, this is super cute. It was actually a little big for the ring finger, so I, I used it as a middle finger ring, I'm going to show you all that stuff. And, 
of course, in my brain at first, I'm like, you do not need to be buying all this stuff, girl. And I'm like, no, you actually you do. Because how many times do you come in here and it's all about the kids stuff, all about the dog stuff, all about the home? Uh Uh-uh. We're going to just, we're just doing it. Like, we don't need a reason. Okay. And what else did I get? The makeup. That I I wanted to look around a little bit more, but I was watching the clock and I was like, I got to get back over there for my massage. So let me just wrap things up. No pun intended. So I got back in the car and I got to the massage place. And as soon as I got in that chair, I was like, I am so glad that I did this. I so needed to do this. It is the, it's called relax the feet. I think they're only in my area here, but um, it's not one of those like shady type. I'm not, I'm not going to one of those like shady happy ending type massage places. I'm not doing that. Like mm-mm. this is very clean, very upscale, very nice. Um, it's just, it's, they, they do a very good job. I've been there several times and it's just the most relaxing thing. And I'm kind of weird about massages I think it's a little strange to me and I've done, I've done them, you know, where you get under the blanket completely naked and someone's like rubbing all over your body right up to your ass and your back. It's just a little weird to me. (laughs) Um, So this one, I really like it because you keep your clothes on and you're like sitting in a reclined type of chair and they do your head, your neck, a little bit of your back while you're sitting there and then your hands, your arms, and then the feet is like the main, the main thing, the main course. And it's just so, so relaxing. So I do that and when it's over, because the room is, you know, pretty dark. I mean, it takes a minute for you, (laughs) it takes a minute to like come back to life. You kind of feel drunk in a sense. And let me tell you, when I left there, and I'm always like this when I leave there, I'm a disheveled mess because they put oil like on your forehead. So I've got like oil all over my forehead, my hair, which was in like a tight low bun from the rub in my head, it now looks like I have dandruff from all the gel I have to use to keep my hair down. So my hair is like looking like I got dandruff. Um, I had filled in my eyebrows like a little bit. They're running down my face because they rub on your forehead and everything. I mean, and then from your eyes being shut, like I'm just looking a mess. And then I feel drunk because I'm so relaxed. I feel like I'm in this drunken state. It's so strange. Like every time I go, I'm like, at the counter, like, okay, here, yeah, here's the tip. And, like, the lady's trying to ask me, like, did you enjoy, and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I don't, I must look ridiculous. And every time I go, I get out to my car, and I literally have to just, because then you're going out to the bright sun, which is, like, shocking from being in that room. And I'm like, I got to just sit here for a minute, because I am so disheveled and, like, out of it. Like, I actually feel like I've been drinking. <laughs> So I I have to catch, you know, kind of like catch my breath and sit there for a minute. And I'm like, all right, cool. What am I going to do now? Because by now it is 545. It's 545 in the afternoon. So I'm like, okay, what am I doing with myself? Like, let me think about the plans for the rest of the day. Because if we're going to go shopping and do certain things, there's a, you know, there's a deadline, right? There's a deadline for that. So, Okay. Let me back let me back it up for a minute. So you know how I told you that um I wanted you guys to set clear boundaries about people not contacting you, right? Well, the good thing is, I was very proud of him. My husband did not contact me the entire day. He did not reach out to me. I think he sent me like one video of Javi like at the playground and that was it. I'm the one who ended up messaging him, okay? And I found, you know, because this is the first time I've taken a day off like this, truly taken this type of time off um, without, with my daughter having type 1 diabetes. So it's already hard enough to zone out and like just say, okay, I'm not going to worry about the kids today. He's got it. Like, and I know he has it. I'm not worried about him. It's just when you're so used to being like the primary person it's hard to let go. It's even harder to let go when you are someone's pancreas and you're managing a medical condition. 
Does Frank know how to do it for her? Yes, he does. Do I know how to do things a little bit better? Yeah, I do. Because I, I'm with her more than he is with our schedules. So, you know, letting go of that control is really hard. And because I wear my smartwatch and my smartwatch has her blood sugar on it at all times, as well as it's on my phone, I'm looking down and this is before I went into lunch. Okay. And I look down and she is crashing and she's crashing hard. And I knew, I just figured, I was pretty sure they were swimming in the pool because I did glance at the baby monitor and I saw... (laughs) I did do it. I I went on the baby monitor and I could see Javi and I'm like, okay, Javi's taking a nap. I guarantee you Frank and Kat are in the pool. And the way her number was dropping, and earlier that day she was running really high. She was running really, really high. And so um, I was like, I hope he knows that because he's in the pool his watch does not have the same thing as mine where it goes, cause mine is waterproof as well. So when we go swimming, I can wear the watch and still keep an eye on her, her blood sugar. I know he's probably got the phone right next to the pool anyway, and he's checking, but you just don't know. And it's so hard when you see your daughter's blood sugar going down to like, I think it was like 50 or 45 with two arrows going down, which is really bad. At the same time, I'm kind of like, well, you know, the Dexcom, which is what she wears, it's called a Dexcom. It's been messing. It does mess up periodically where it will give a really low number and it's actually not low. So, you know, he's got it. He's, and I was like, I can't go in here and relax and eat my food knowing her blood sugar could be crashing. So I just text and I'm like, Hey, you got this, everything. Okay. Um, and he's not replying. I call, he's not answering. And I'm just like, you know, as a parent, like you just go to the worst case scenario sometimes. And I'm just picturing her blood sugar crashed and she's so low that he's had to give her the glucagon and the ambulance is in front of the house and she's having a seizure. Like, I'm just like, uh, uh-uh, we can't go there. We can't go there. We can't go there. You know, you know, he's got it girl. You know, he has her like he knows how to take care of her and he does a good job of it. So finally I said, do I need to come home? I'm not hearing anything. And I said, you know what? I'm on the way. And I literally was about to just start driving home. So finally I get him on the phone. And the reason he wasn't answering is they were in the pool. She jumps in the pool and her insulin pump on her leg falls off. So he's in the house taking care of all of that while also she's drinking juice at the same time to get her number up. So Of course he has it. I I know he has it, right? But it was like that was the one moment of the whole day where I had to, I felt like I had to control the situation, even though Frank is more than capable of taking care of it. And he was taking care of it. And the reason he wasn't answering is because he was taking care of it. (laughs) So it's a lesson for me to know that even with a diabetic five-year-old, it's okay to let go. When she's, with, when she's with your husband, her dad, let go. It's okay. He can handle it. He's on top of things. So after that happened, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm done. I'm not going to be checking in anymore. And when I went into my massage, I took the watch off, guys, because I knew they were going to do the hand massage and all that. I took the watch off and I threw it in my console because I didn't want that thing buzzing. And I turned my phone off as well because if she were to go extremely low, my phone will make the most obnoxious screaming sound to let me know. Even when you have all of your do not disturb, it overrides that because I have the settings that way for a reason. I was like, turn it off. It's too hot to leave it in the car. Just turn it off. And then from that moment, okay, I'm fine. So that was my little derail for a second. So then what did I do? It's 5.45 now. I'm done with the massage. And I'm thinking, all right, uh, do I want to get a hotel room for the night? And then all this guilt came over me like, you can't stay out overnight. And I'm like, wait a second. Yes, I can. And I'm like, Frank also made it very clear. He's like, I don't want to see you home till Sunday. So you should just go get a room somewhere. 
And then I'm like Googling. I have like my hotels app and I'm like looking at Williamsburg because I was going to go there to the outlets and then go gamble. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should stay up here. And they're just, I don't know. Something came over me where I was like, I don't really know that I want to do that, which now I, I will tell you full stop. I completely regret that decision. <laughs> I completely regret that decision. I do. I should have gotten myself a damn room with a big ass bathtub and just said the hell with it all. And part of it too is I didn't have any of my stuff. And I was like, okay, well I could go to Walmart. The, the minimum things that I need, toothbrush, toothpaste, contact solution, you know, we don't need to go. I don't want to go home and disrupt the day, right? To get stuff. We can get the bare minimum and we'll be fine. So I do fully regret that decision. I'm going to, I'm going to be very clear. Like I should have just said, you know what? Nope. We're going to get a room. We're going to go eat. We're going to go take a bath. We're going to just hang out and just have, have some more me time. So anyway, I did not get a room, but I did drive to Williamsburg. I went to the outlets. There's a cosmetic store that I love to go to. I always get my perfume there. I've been wearing the same perfume, you guys, since 2005, which is crazy to me. I like what I like. They don't have it anymore. And I'm like, seriously? And the makeup selection was like, eh. It was, it was pretty meh when I went in there. I did get a eyeshadow palette, uh, a Too Faced eyeshadow palette, the bear. It's called Bear, bear something. It has like a little teddy bear on it, and it's all nudes, like barely there. I guess something like that. I don't know. It's corny, but it's cute. And I walked around a little bit to the outlets, and it's like an hour from closing time. Some places are already closing down. And all of a sudden, I just kind of felt low, like – not low blood sugar, because we're always talking about that. On I felt low energy, just like, what do I do now? I miss everybody. I wonder what they're doing. Oh, it's bet. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, what is this? What is this with us? With with mothers, like, we can't wait to have a break, and then we have a break, and we get out, and we're like, oh, I miss everyone. And I'm just thinking, I'm well, oh, they're doing bedtime right now. I bet they're taking a bath and they're probably watching a movie. I wonder what they're up to. You know, ugh, it, ridiculous, right? And I kind of start feeling low energy, kind of like a sadness of like, I just want to go home now. I don't know what else I'm going to go do. I don't want to be alone anymore. And all I ever want is to go be alone for a while. <laughs> I cannot with myself. So I'm like, okay. Um, okay, cool. Let's go to Target. Why the hell do they make that decision? I don't know. So this is where for my Irresistible U day, there was like this period of time that was kind of like, I don't want to say it was wasted, but it was kind of silly of just like, I don't really know what I'm doing right now. And I think I do know what it was. This is why you should, like, I did have a, a broad idea of what I was going to do that day. But as far as staying overnight, I should have made a hard decision on that, like that morning or the night before. So that way I knew, okay, we have a hotel, home base is there, that's what we're going to go do. And I didn't do that. And I go to Target for the reasons I will never understand why I went there. And I just start buying snacks. Like, I, <laughs> I don't... I, We'll dissect it here, right? Let's dissect it here. What was the reasoning? So I'm in Target, and I'm still on the fence of, like, I don't really know if I'm going to stay overnight somewhere. It's already, like, 7. What, what time is it by now? It's, like, closer to 8, I want to say. 8 or 9. It's, like, pretty late at this point. It's, like, 8 or 9 o'clock. And so I bought, like, a toothbrush and toothpaste and a hairbrush and then I just start buying snacks because I'm still like undecided what I want to do. Because by now I'm like, by the time I get a room, because I still was like, I want to go to the casino tonight, right? And I'm like, you know, I feel funky. I've been out all day. I don't really know if I want to go to the casino looking a mess, even though people are in there with their oxygen tanks and their wheelchairs and their like, you know, 2005 concert tour t-shirts. What do I give a shit for, right? <laughs> like, I don't care. Um, you know, it's, it's a hot mess in there anyway. It's always a hot mess of people. It's the best people watching in the world when you go to a casino. 
And I mean, this is not Atlantic City or Vegas. Like this is not, it's just slot machines. There is nothing else there, right? There's a bar, but it's not like there's a club. There's not like, it's not that type of place, Amy. <laughs> Get your life together. And I'm like, okay, I'm walking around Target. Next thing I know, I've got the um, potato chips. I don't even really eat potato chips, but I had the Lay's, the Limon so freaking good they're like my favorite if I do have chip they are so good I've got a bag of those I got a bag of the peanut butter trail the target trail mix if you know you know I've got a bag of cheese sticks like <laughs> sharp white cheddar cheese I've got a bag of those I've got some chocolate what are the uh, lint and I'm like whoa what is happening right now this is not okay then I was like, you know what? It is okay. I don't give a shit. And I bought all of these snacks. And I don't even know where I'm going to eat them or what I'm doing with them. I just bought them. And I put them in the car. And I pay for them. I get in the car. And I'm like, okay, you know what it is? I am starving. Because the last time I ate, it was at like 2 o'clock. So I am starving. I probably, that low feeling was probably was low blood sugar because I was getting the shakes. I was feeling really out of it. It was low blood sugar. And you know how it is. If you go somewhere when you're starving, you start putting shit in the cart that you don't even want. And so that was kind of like a dumb detour of my day. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys because I'm just sharing the whole day with you. Take what you want from that. And right next to the Target was a Chick-fil-A. And I'm like, I don't really want to eat Chick-fil-A for dinner. I was actually going to eat at the casino place because I kept seeing on the reviews that they have, people were saying their burgers are like the best, right? But I was like, I don't really know how it is there. Is it going to be awkward? Um, and I should have just gone straight there and had dinner there, and I didn't. And I wasted, I, I'm always saying how I never find a Chick-fil-A with shitty service. Well, this one this one for the win. I mean, the wait time was absolutely ridiculous and that wasted so much time. So now I'm like, okay, I ate. It was not what I wanted to eat. No, I did not open any of these snacks. I did not open any of them in the car. So yay me. And I start driving back down because the casino place is on my way home. And I freshen up in the car because I told you I was a mess at this point because I've, you know, the massage, the oil, the eyebrows running off like we we gotta we gotta get ourselves a little more presentable because this is ridiculous so I do that and I went in the casino and it was amazing I had so much fun I went and got me a drink um I didn't get my usual they have like a signature drink called the riveter because the name of the casino is called Rosie's Rosie the riveter it's so good so sweet but I had two of those and I you know set my limit for what I was going to spend and I had fun and it was just me by myself and it was so much fun. And by now it's like, it's like close to midnight and I've been out since like nine in the morning and I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to just go home after this. And I was actually feeling good about that. Like, you know what? I feel, I feel like I just want to go home and like hang out with Frank. We'll watch a movie or something knowing damn well I'm going to pass out as soon as I get home. <laughs> I'm going to be so tired. But anyway, I just wanted to go home at that point. And I didn't want to stay anywhere. Because I'm like, I don't want to go stay anywhere now because it's already midnight. Checkout is, you know, 11 or 12. It's really not worth it to me to go do that at this point. So anyway, I drove home. And I told you before, I completely regret that decision. <laughs> because I know... I already know the minute you get home, any relaxation that you felt for the day, the moment you're home and the circus begins, it's over. It's like within five minutes, you already forget the drunken stupor that you felt after the massage. It's already over. And we're talking now, guys. It's 1 a.m., okay? I walk in the kitchen. <laughs> I walk in the kitchen, and the first thing that happens to me, I step in dog pee. I step in dog pee from Chewy. That's a whole other story for another day. He's been having some issues. Uh, I step in dog pee on the tile, almost fall, and bust my ass. 
So that happened. So now I'm on the I'm on my knees on the tile cleaning dog pee at 1 a.m. Okay. <laughs> and then then I'm sitting at the kitchen table. And I look up and it my own child scared the hell out of me. There's Kat standing in the doorway. It's dark. Her long hair is like all she's like looking down and all her hair is hanging down and she has this long vampirina nightgown on that she wears. And I'm like, "Oh my god, it always scares me because it's like the ring, that girl from the ring." And I'm like, "Oh my god, you scared me." She's "Mommy." She's in the and I'm like, "Oh my fucking are you serious right now? Are you effing serious right now?" Not to her. I'm saying this in my head. I'm like, I regret that decision. Why am I not sitting in a Marriott somewhere in a bubble bath in a big fat white robe? <laughs> like I should have done it. So, um, yeah. So she's wide awake because she woke up and I wasn't there. She knew I was she knew I was having an Amy day, but I was so scared and you weren't there and blah, blah. okay. So now she's hungry, so we got to make her a sandwich and it's just like are you kidding? Like, are you kidding me? Everything that happened today is like a relic of the past already. So, <laughs> and then the next morning when everybody's up and, you know, running through the hallway and acting a fool, circus is in full, full, we're in the full swing, we're in the, we are in the full swing of the circus right now, okay? And I'm thinking, wow, you could be sitting in a big ass bed alone with your room service, taking your sweet ass time, coming back home. But no, we had to come home because we, anyway, it was a great day. It's, it, it was an amazing day. My takeaway from that is the next time I do something like this, where it's on the weekend, you know, um, I will make it a 24 hour trip. Because I have done that before, and I've in the times that I've done that, it hasn't been for like just relaxation. It was actually more for like business planning. I will go to a hotel, bring all my like big white sticky notes and markers, and like do a bunch of planning sessions. And it, I just I love it. I geek out over it. It's amazing. And next time, this will be a 24 hour event, and I will make better plans. And that's why I told you one of the rules that I want for you to do is have a good idea. Don't plan it down to the minute, but have a good idea of what you want to do. And that was my one regret is that if I would have said, okay, this is going to be a 24 hour trip. I'm going to stay at a hotel and pick where it's going to be. This is where we're going to stay. And then what I could have done is then, um, sit, planned everything else around that as the hub. And that's probably the one, mis you know, that was the one regret that I have. Everything else, I don't regret any of it. It was so, it was just so nice to be with myself, to turn up my music, to turn on my, you know, I listen to videos or podcasts in the car and just, and just be free and just go, you know, but then you have that moment where it's like, oh my God, oh my, oh my God, I miss everybody so much. Like, and in the minute you're there, you're like, oh my God, I miss being alone, <laughs> so, whatever, um, but it was good. I did. I missed everyone. I missed my kids. And I'm like, I just want to go spend time and hang out with them too. And that's what we did the next day. So yeah, guys, this is what dating yourself is like. And everything is a learning experience because when you do something like this, you also learn what do you like and what do you don't like. And I learned that this is what I'm going to do differently next time because I needed that full 24 hours to really recover and regroup and step away from, from things. And I will be very honest. Um, some of my hesit or why I didn't just take bite the bullet and go do it is I think that there's some old programming that was going on of like, is this really okay? Should I really be doing this? Um, does he really mean it? Like, and he does. Frank is like very secure and very, um, like he says what he means, I guess. Like he wouldn't just say that to say it. And 
I don't know. So that's something for me I have to work through. And it's it's old programming. I know exactly where it's coming from. And it's crazy to me how that kind of stuff can still be there, you know, almost 20 years later. So, yeah, that's for another day. But I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was it was really nice. And, you know, Kat's like, oh, my gosh, how was your Amy day? Because that's all she she was like. And she was so cute, you guys, that morning. She's the one who really woke. She's like, Mommy, Mommy, it's Amy Day. Wake up, wake up. It's Amy Day. You got to go. It's Amy Day. And I think that's so valuable, you know, for moms. You're, you sometimes will feel that guilt of, like, I shouldn't be abandoning and leaving my children over the weekend. But you're not. And I think it's so valuable for your kids to see you take care of you. Because they're going to learn from that. They're going to learn that that's not selfish. They're going to learn that that is not frivolous. They're going to learn that that's necessary. And I think that's a good lesson that we teach our children. So, um, yeah, guys, look for that Instagram reel. I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> struggle through it and get it done. Um, I'm so not used to making reels, so I'm learning as I go. And I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed all of my chit chat and all of my like derailing and just blabbering on about my day. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Instagram or in the Facebook group. Let me know when you're going to go plan your Irresistible You Day and what are you going to do? What are you going to plan to do? Let me know what that looks like. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for listening. If this has been helpful in any way or anything on the podcast has helped you, please head over to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and review. If you don't use Apple and you're not on an iPhone, then you can go to any podcast player. They should have a way to leave some type of review and rating. That would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I will catch you in the next episode. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye.